Yes, I'm Stephen Mayfield. I am professor of biology at the University of California, San Diego, and I am director of the San Diego Center for Algae Biotechnology. I've been working on algae for about 25 years in one capacity or another. So are there parallels between what we're going to do in algae and, and other genetic modifications that have come along prior to this? Absolutely. Uh, the easiest one for all of us to see is what's happened in plant biotechnology over the last 25 years uh, with the genetically modified corn and soybean. Those have now been out in the field, some of them for as long as 10 years, studied very well. What are the, the regulatory um, structure that's in place right now for any genetically modified organism? That's housed in three different places. The U.S. Department of Agriculture um, regulates all plants and all transgenic plants, and because algae is an aquatic plant, it absolutely falls under USDA regulation. Unambiguous, the guidelines are in place, we know what those are. In addition to that, the EPA regulates something under the Toxic Substances Control Act that says if you have any toxins in that organism or the potential to make them, then they are regulated by EPA. And then of course the Food and Drug Administration regulates anything that would be consumed. Um, so when we, when, and people do talk about, you know, can we have algae that we would use as animal food or human food, then that would be regulated by the Food uh, and Drug Administration. Then, of course, the regulations are much tighter if you want to feed it to either one of those groups. The truth of the matter is that all of the modifications we're going to make to algae, and this is whether we do them by genetic engineering or breeding or selection or simply screening for naturally occurring strains, every single one of those, what we are generating are algae that produce more compounds that they normally produce. We've already done the experiment in agriculture. All of our genetic modifications that we've made to corn, to soybean, to rice, all of those things make them less fit to survive in the wild. You never hear farmers complaining about the corn weeds or the rice weeds that they have in their field. The native strains have been adapted and they've evolved to grow faster and be more competitive. And they can do that because they're not spending all their energy trying to make something for us. I think what I would do is, is give people the understanding of two things. One, the consequences that we're going to face in the very near future as we have burned through all of our fossil fuel, and the urgency that we had better get on board with having a way to deal with that. And then the understanding, I think, that algae, even though you know we try to clean it out of our bird baths and our swimming pools and other places that it ends up, the reason that we do that is because these guys grow really fast and we need to take advantage of that.